to a quick summary of 2021. 2021 was another good year. Ups and downs with cancer changed my cancer treatment, which is all going very well. Had some good races, raced in the World Championships in Lanzarote and managed to win the Malacabra in Brazil, which I'm very happy. Getting my training and everything up to speed. And then funny enough, just before Christmas, I was flat on my back for 10 days. I had a, a flu, but again, this is life. Life shows, uh, throws you these curve balls. There I was in, in the Winston Churchill's hotel in, in Lobo, what is the place? Uh, the, the Wolf in, in uh, Madeira. I was, I was going to go and tr train with, with Bernardo Pereira and nothing happened because I was lying in bed the whole time. So I went all the way to Madeira with the whole family. I had Luke and Hannah and, and Claire there. And what could I do? Nothing. Just lie on my bed and recover. And from that moment, funny enough, I sort of made my first uh, New Year's resolution to get back down to a real fighting weight. So I, I ballooned up to like 119. By the time I left Madeira, I was already on 111. So that's that was a start. But as I say, I've had to really rest. Yesterday, I tried my first CrossFit and my heart's still high. So 10 days of rest, these things happen. So reflecting on 2021, I would like to thank all my sponsors, which that's why I'm wearing this shirt. Nello, obviously the main guys, and then Sean Partners, which is which is Earl Evans and Alan Zion. They are doing so much for surf ski paddling in Australia, but around the world and helping everybody else. Bracha Paddles, Andras and, and, and Arunas, making me fantastic paddles all the time. Jim's always supplying me with great eyewear. And then the people that you don't see all the time, like my good friend, Richard Downey from Thule, always supplying me with luggage and roof racks. Sean McCarthy, he, he pr pr provides the SMG BMW cars when I'm South Africa, BM car here. So, and, and Paul Harris has been a, did a really nice thing for me this year. Claire and I stayed at a very fancy element house because of Paul Harris. And again, it takes a lot of people, all the people, all the doctors that, that were involved in making me healthy. And of course the family, friends, and you guys supporters. So. Without further ado, let's work on how do we do our goals for 2022. Everybody makes these goals and not many people achieve them. The reason why they don't achieve them, normally the goals are too big or they haven't broken it down. The secret of, of making goals is number one, to make them fairly high and fairly uh, substantial, but is to work it out how to get there. Remember what I always say, if you haven't written down your goal, so you've only got, you've got another two days, in two days time, write down those goals. They say that if you write down your goal on your, on your notebook or your, or your cell phone, if you write down your goal, that 90% of it is already achieved. So that's all you have to do. But once you've written that goal, you've got to make a plan. And the plan is what you're going to do each month to get to the Remember, this is 2022. It's a whole year. Some, some events are going to come earlier than others. I mean, my goals on the physical side is to try and get to be able to do 10 pull-ups. At the moment, and now listen to this, at the moment, I'm supposed to be a professional athlete, although aging, I can't do one pull-up, not even one. I can't do one pull-up, but my goal is to do 10. And I know that I'm going to be doing CrossFit for three times a week. And by the end of the year, I want to do my 10 pull-ups. So the way I'm doing it is that three times a week when I'm, Portugal I'll, and when I travel around, I'll find a CrossFit place and I'll try and do my 10 pull-ups by the end of the year. So it's a small thing. I, and, and at the moment, all I can do is actually jump on the bar like that and then let myself down slowly and, and build up these muscles that are going to make me do a pull-up. Now I've had two weeks that I've gone off, so I've gone backwards. And my other goal is to actually finish a CrossFit se a session, a hard one, flat out like I normally do because this is my high intensity training. My hit training is my, my CrossFit. When I swim, when I, when I paddle and when I cycle, it's always done at math, you know, math, maximum aerobic function, uh, by full methadone. So I don't really push myself and I try and do three times a week hit high intensity training with CrossFit. I love it. It really helps my back and helps everything. So 
hopefully my body uh, can take it and I'll get faster and faster and faster. Obviously, my shortest goal is to do well in the Z Caribbean race, which is going to be held on the 29th of January. So it's not a long time to go. So believe me, I've done absolutely haven't picked up a paddle in uh, more than two weeks. So my secret of success there is to introduce slow paddling, but just doing technique because I can't go fast yet. So I'm going to do technique because no matter how clever and how good we think we are, Technique's the only thing that's going to help me through it. And then obviously, because it's in the Caribbean and I'm going to be doing lots of videos. So all those people that member member of Oscar's club and Oscar's videos, um, you'll be getting a lot of videos coming from the Caribbean because it's magnificent. I've been there two times, three times. In fact, one, I came second once paying a 510 on a 52 kilometer race. And then the next two times I won. Uh, and I have to say it's for Nicholas Lambert, who came second once. He's probably 30 years younger than me. And then Victor Du is, he's definitely more than 30 years younger than me, came second other time. So I really love the Caribbean. It's a nice place for teaching a lot of people. It's a nice place for learning downwind and it's going to be nice warm weather. And we've had really nice weather in, in, in Villa de Cont and, and Nero and I have been trying to paddle, but now we'll do more paddling. So. That's going to be my first goal is to see if I can get close to winning Z race with absolutely no training. The maximum amount of training I'll do is 30 days. So that's, that's how much time I've got. I'll do a lot of training there and I'll build up my strength to get really fit. So the other goals, obviously we've got a lot of races on next year. Hopefully if COVID plays ball and, and my chemo sessions play ball, cause we've got we got the Z race, then I'm going to Israel. For all those people in Israel, I'm going to come for a clinic for 10 days, doing clinics every day, teaching the Israelis. I've been there many times, love the place. And, and, and I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And then from there, I'm going to go to Brazil to do clinics around the whole of Brazil. Uh, I've got a good following there and I'm really impressed by the people. They've been watching my videos and, and actually implementing what I teach, and that's the best thing, because I know they're improving and they're getting better all the time. And then obviously we've got the Molokai might happen this year. I'm, I'm hoping that happens. Then we've got the Bellevue race in Denmark in June. We've got the Gorge Downwind Champs. Hopefully we can fly to that. Then we've got the Nella Summer Challenge. That's going to be my big goal, the Nella Summer Challenge, which is from Vienna de Castello to Ophi. It's my home track. It's where I do all my training. And I really, really, love my, my home course. And that's also going to be the world championships for 2022. And I'd like to at least win my age group and beat a few of the youngsters in that race. So again, um, the whole thing is you've got to split up the months, make sure your months are all worked out, what you're going to do. And, and my, my goal for 2022 is, is just to keep getting stronger, do more cross training because I find, I definitely find that, that I need it. I'm a little bit weak from the cancer. It makes my heart rate go high. And then obviously next year is going to be a very exciting year because it's called No Retreat, No Surrender is coming out. And I'll have to be doing a lot of book tours, selling the whole concept and, and promoting the book. And hopefully this book will help a lot of people, not only in paddling, but in every aspect of life, how to get positive, how to be stronger and how to be better in life generally. And how I've done the book with Graham Spence is that I made sure that after every chapter, I've got uh, life lessons so that you can learn from it. So it hopefully it'll make you a better person once you've read it once or twice. Okay. Any questions before we go in there, Kay? All being good. How many people we got watching there? Okay, that's not... Yeah, it's 200 on the top, top oh, left. Oh, 96. Okay. So because it's between Christmas and New Year and a lot of people are on holiday, but you can watch this later. Remember, you can subscribe to my coaching courses online where I give lots of videos. I've probably got 60 or 70 videos and I'm always there for giving you advice on anything you need. And, and this is just shows you what I, what I cover in my clinics. It takes a, a long time. The first. I'm just going to quickly go over what we discussed last week is where to hold the paddles. 
it's very simple at 90 degrees and you see i've got in the shortest because i'm in a short area at 90 degrees basically to promote rotation remember that's the biggest mistake people make is they don't rotate so i'm going to watch the christmas trees and all that got to watch my rotation then we've got also we all know that this paddle is bent backwards so that we don't go past vertical the three things that cause your paddle to go past vertical are number one pushing with the top hand number two pulling with the bottom hand and number three pulling too far back and dropping your top hand pulling your your hand back and dropping your top hand remember the reason why i change paddle length as i get tired and 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 we must just think of uh, i was just thinking about bonnie hancock she just started on her quest to go around australia freya hofmeister did it and she went anti-clockwise and now bonnie's going clockwise which i think is a better uh, a better way of doing it and she's been clocking some hundred kilometer days she's doing a fantastic job and it was funny i, I spoke to her and i said bonnie one thing you got to realize i you've got to go to zero feather and was, of course she's not racing she went straight to zero feather and now she doesn't get a sore uh, wrist on her right hand and she's not going to get any blisters on her hand because everything works symmetrical so that was very interesting so bonnie's on day 12 and she's done sure close to 800 kilometers and she's done a lot of 100 and 110 kilometers a day so we wish her luck richard kohler a friend from mine in south africa he's paddling to brazil salvador de bahia so he's paddling there and he's had a bit of misfortune so he's trying to get to walpus bay and that's going to be one hard paddle so he's got a very long paddle and a very big boat so it's very cumbersome very difficult to go against the wind in fact impossible to go against the wind but i'm sure he's going to go to walpus bay and fix his desalinators and his and his battery pack so that that he um, can carry on from brazil but he's got a, he was half, he was like way offshore. Now he has to come back on shore, get all that stuff fixed up and then go again. Cause again, the whole story is preparation is the most important thing. If you haven't got water going 7,000 kilometers, you've got a problem. So, and he's, his desalinator is not working because the battery's not working. Okay. So today we're going to just go back to the basics of, of technique. Um, and we've talked about the default position meaning that our paddle shaft is parallel with our chest at all times all times and our elbows are down to keep our center of gravity down and this is how the stroke works and obviously as you can see i'm on zero which gives you no problems with wrists because you just slowly just touch a little bit and rotate a little bit on each wrist when you are on zero okay so now the biggest thing that, that 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 disappointed me when I was teaching all over the world is that I would go and teach them and explain to them how to paddle nicely and a lot of people do this and they spend so much time paddling with the people and thinking oh and you come back one year later and can you believe it the people have still got the same technique so how all my coaching came about is that I play golf I play tennis I play rugby any of those sports you go and google swimming and I was a top swimmer and water polo player if you just type how to do freestyle, you'll see Michael Phelps doing drills, drills, lots of drills. He's probably got 200 drills on how to perfect uh, your freestyle, how you get the catch and how you pull down and how you use your legs and how you use your body. All these things are broken up. So what happened was it was actually in Germany where the guy said, hey, you've, you've given me so much information. You need to write it down. So the first thing is, is I wrote it down and I broke it down. My whole thing about my technique, how I coach and how I do it all the time and how I coach myself is to break the stroke down to small little pieces that you can work on to improve. Understand it's actually much harder to coach uh, people that have been planning for a long time than newbies. Newbies are so much easier. They listen more and they haven't got these bad habits. And lots of people have got a lot of bad habits. So if you've got bad habits, the only way you're going to break it down is by going through small little compartments of techniques. So the whole thing about it is that even for your coach, if you feel that your paddle's splashing, there should be a drill to fix that up. And the only way you're going to fix up your paddle splashing is not by doing 10 kilometer time trials and watching your paddle and trying to make it not splash. 
The only way you're going to do that is to break down the stroke into little parts that will help you to become a better paddler slowly but surely, because it doesn't happen overnight. Even me, I make mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes because you always default to what you were taught before. I mean, the old days we're taught paddling with our arms. That's all out of the out of the, the, the question now. All the wing paddle was made for is to use your big muscles, which is your legs and your core. And those are much bigger than your arms. So the paddling stroke is very simple. It's broken into four parts. Sounds very simple. The left hand, four parts. Four parts on the left hand side and four parts on the right hand side. Basically, it's simple like this is that I'm just going to do the right hand side so I don't break anything. So the first thing is our catch. The first thing is the catch. That's the catch. Then the next phase, you can see my legs are already bent. The next phase is the power. See, power. And notice that I use my legs to get the power. Then it's the exit. Let me just push that over there. Yeah. Then it's the exit. And then recovery. And the recovery like that very important part of the stroke but not many people so it's four parts catch power exit recovery so and they did both sides left and right hand side so it sounds so simple but the biggest thing that happens is that this is what most people and a lot of people have been taught this way the catch goes like this the first thing they do is they shoot their arm forward okay once you've shot your arm forward the biggest problem with that is that is that your body hasn't rotated so that's the first mistake and then once your arms appear you do the famous air stroke and the famous air stroke is that you hit the water and you get a nice splash here which hurts your elbow and your shoulder and your wrists because i've come from here and i've hit the water so what we're trying to do in our catch is very simple we rotate and i've said and it's going to be close i rotate as much as possible as you get older you don't rotate and then all i do and again i'm keeping this parallel hit this drop this paddle into the water and important on the catch is to make sure that i'm 90 degrees to the boat see that 90 degrees to the boat close to the boat without hitting it very close sometimes you hit it but not very often and then very important 90 degrees because so many people put the paddle in here and they think they're doing a wing stroke it's not really put the paddle in and you push down on the blade. And then the most important part, because most people have paid full price, use the whole blade. So the water must go up to here. So that is the catch. So the catch is, have a look there from here, rotate, parallel, everything's parallel. And then I just drop it in and then I'm ready for the pull. So you can see if I rotate my body, my legs work properly here. Have a look at that, wood eggs are working properly. In it goes and then I'm ready for the power phase. So now the power phase is driving this leg into my footrest, which is pushing my bow forward, and this paddle is locked. So if I had to do this in slow motion, it's locked there, and it sort of goes back a little bit, and then it starts going out by itself. And then by this stage, I've pulled myself past, past the, 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 the blade, and I'm into the exit phase. So what happens in the exit? The exit is very important is that you start exiting by your knees. You start exiting by your knees. So you put it in there, there, and at your knees, you let the power go. If I carry on pulling, you'll find that you make a lot of splash, a lot of sore trapeze muscles. And what you want to do is stop pulling by your knees. What happens is because your boat's still going forward, you'll go forward and then the paddle will come out before your waist and all you do to get it out because there's no pressure on it is just lift your elbow up and notice that if i I'll lift my elbow I'll lift my hand up if you notice i'm in default again i'm in the perfect spot and then it's important in the recovery to keep the hand the same height now what happens in the monica you'll see the hands got lower 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 unless you're jim walker you actually start low you've got to actually keep them up because the higher it is, the better angle I get into putting it into the water. So that's how simple it is. So I thought, gee, all I have to do is teach them this and take them on the water and show them once or two or three or four times, but it doesn't happen. Because everybody, when they get into the boat, the first thing they do is they get unstable. Now, the first thing you do when you get unstable is you use your core for balance, 
And once you use your core for balance, then you end up padding like this because your core is locked in. So then your legs don't work and everything falls apart. That's why it's important to realize that stability before ability is the most important part of surf ski padding and any padding. If you're an unstable boat, I can tell you right now, the first thing that goes into, uh, into a power phase is your core and the core stops all your rotation and all your leg, leg movement. So make sure you're on a stable boat. And as I said before, we talked about it, I think the most important stroke is the brace stroke because that's where you're going to start from and then in you go. So the brace stroke is important to make you much more stable and confident so that you can paddle in big rough water because you are confident that your body and your legs and everything are working hard together. Uh, hey? Yeah, yeah, of course. Explain how the blade enters the water at the patch phase. Okay, so as you get better, so when you're doing drills, and I'm going to get back to the drills, is that it's actually a very fast movement and it goes like that, and I drop it in and I'm pulling. The, the most important part of that catch is not to be pulling before the blade is in at its peak. So many people pull and you get a little splash. If you got a splash, that means that your blade is coming back faster than you locking in. Because what we want to do is in and back. So, so let, uh, uh, can you see that? It goes, it goes in and then back. Because you'll find that as you get better at this technique is that the paddle wants to push out. So you really have to push down and you want to lift yourself up like a pole vault. So you have to really get this blade in, in and back, but it takes time. So I teach it as a slow motion. The, the, and I'm going to talk about the catch now is there in once the whole blades in and then we pull. So that's how I teach it. So my drills that I, that I do to break down the stroke, I do at least 12 drills and I, and I try and do them every day. Like now coming up to the race in, in the Caribbean and Guadeloupe, I'll be doing technique to make sure that my technique's perfect because I know that's going to help me more than getting fit because I don't think I'm going to get that fit. So what I've got is three catch drills, one hand catch, two hand catch, catch and pull. The reason why I did the catch and pull phase is that too many people still, when they say, okay, let's do a catch, the first thing they do is that. And then once you've done that, you've negated your rotation. Once you negated your rotation, you're negated using your legs and your and your big muscles. Okay, so that's very important. So the catch movements and understand what I always do, and I even do this now. I always do my drills in waist deep water, so I can actually feel how to do these drills properly without being unstable. And you'll find that you you ask Nello and you ask Bernardo. I will do the technique drills in a 510. So very stable boat so that I can make sure that I'm concentrating on technique and not worrying about balance. But as you get better, you should be able to be in your racing boat in big conditions, be able to do these drills like you're on flat water. And that's what takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. So that's what I'll be working on. So you have three catch drills. And it's just to show you that, that gravity works so well. It's just don't do this on your catch. Don't do this on your catch draw. It's just there. Keep it parallel and do this. Because what I, why I did the one hand catch and not two hand, because people are already starting to do this. I know when I'm coaching, people are starting to do this already. If I if I let that let them only use one hand, they do that. So now the catch draw, and I'm just showing you the side, two hand catch, always go from default, always rotate, and then in. And that's it. And this one you're not going to go forward. So it's there and in. Notice I try and keep everything. And remember, we're going to start trying to uh, simulate a boat there so we are at 90 degrees, not the side. We want to put it in so we know how to pull. Now, the catch and pull is the first phase where we go forward. The catch and pull. So the catch and pull is three parts. Very important, three parts. The first part is to rotate there. Second part is to drop this paddle in up to here, as I said, 90 degrees to the boat and just pull 30 centimeters. Remember, this is a drill. This is a drill. So to, we want to overdo it because I just want there, come back to default, rotate first, drop the whole paddle in and then pull 30 centimeters. The reason why I want to do that is because I want to try and change your technique from being in here and out here 
to in here and out here. So understand this drill is trying to break the bad habits. And I know your bad habits is pulling too far back. I know everybody thinks the longer the stroke, the faster they go. That doesn't work there. The most important thing is to get this paddle out powerful and still stay not going past vertical. So it's in, pull, and short. Okay. So those are your three catch drills. Any questions there, okay? Okay. So then we go on to every body part. Because every body part, this is one of the best sports in the world, kayaking. Whether you're doing sub paddling, it uses every part of your body. And it uses your brains to catch the waves. So you have to use your toes to steer. So it works every part of the, the body. And the best way to describe it, and that's why I, I went with a simple way of that. I'm going to talk about the hand, elbow, shoulder, core, and legs. So those are the big drills that you're going to learn to do. And that's what I'm going to be doing out there. So the first thing is your top hand drill. Your top hand is a hand that stays here. And this is the hardest drill to perfect because most people put the paddle in and they do this. And notice when I do this, I'm doing it in slow motion. Notice how little movement in my body. So the top hand drill. And remember, every drill that you're doing on one side, it's 10 on one side. One side like this. And you must brace. So it's brace, get ready, turn. And don't worry about it. Remember, we, don't, we want to just master one drill at a time. So don't try and do two or three drills when you're doing it. Just do one drill. And the top hand drill is the the one that I'll do two or three times in a session. That's how important it is. So I brace there. Don't worry, this elbow, this arm stays straight. And then what I do, and, and if you read Malcolm Gladwell's book, 10,000 Hours, they said, if you watch the problem, you can solve it a bit quicker. It doesn't take you 10,000 hours, it takes you 5,000 hours. So you put the paddle in there, and all I do is drive the shoulder forward. Now look at the rotation, drive the shoulder forward, and keep his hand up. Because what happens to most people, they put it in here, and that's the first thing they do is there, and at the end they drop their hand. So what has happened when they drop their hand? They pull this paddle too far back. Because this is driving the power, coming from my whole shoulder, everything, driving, driving this hand forward, but not the hand going forward, it's linked to my shoulder. So this distance must stay the same. So I put it in, top hand drill, and drive it forward. And then I brace back and I drive it forward. Too many people, number one, they do this and they think they're doing rotation. That's not a rotation. And a lot of people do this and they think they're doing well. Okay, this is not well. And you'll see how difficult it is. It looks so easy when I do it. And when I do it, same thing on the right-hand side. Let's have a look. Watch my legs as well. Drive, I brace, put it in there. This arm stays and I drive with my shoulder. Drive with my shoulder. Now look at drive with my shoulder. So keep my elbow still locked in. Again, we want to over exaggerate everything as opposed to drive it and look at how this happens naturally. Because as I said, the way I coach happens naturally. You don't have to worry about these things because it's going to happen naturally. If you drive your shoulder forward, your legs work naturally. You don't have to think about anything. You don't have to think about it because it happens naturally. Okay. The next thing is. Elbow, so it's hand and then elbow. Elbow, it's called locked elbow. So that's the drill. And again, here is where we really perfect pushing down on the blade. So number one, we, we, we brace. And again, the brace is very important. Weight on, rotate. And this is where I make sure, and I don't try and do a catch. I've done the catch rule. All I'm trying to do is a locked elbow. So with my arm there locked, I make sure it's at 90 degrees and I push down on the paddle, down and drive with my legs, down and drive with What will happen, this paddle will go like that and go out automatically. But you've got to push down because we want to use our weight like a pole vaulter to jump over, to pull our boat out the water to get more speed and less resistance and push down. So notice that I do this and then again, it's short. It's only 30 centimeters. Watch my elbow. It doesn't bend. And believe in me, no matter who I coach, this is what happened. And I do it. And this, as soon as I you bend this arm, no movement in the leg. So understand it's drive, drive, and just short. And again, 10 on one side, 10 on the other side. As you say, 
everything is about trying to break the bad habits. So trying to break the bad habits of everybody doing this. Even me, I don't have a perfectly straight elbow, but I do this drill perfectly well with a straight elbow. When I paddle, when I pull, I keep my elbow slightly bent and I do the whole way, but it stays slightly. It doesn't bend like this, and you've probably seen enough videos on it. Okay, so those are the two very important drills. See, so we're going through a lot of time. Do we want to do questions and carry on next time, or what do we want to do? What are the What are the audience saying? Can they hear me nicely and everything is going well? Are we learning? Okay, so that's a good thing. So everybody can hear. Because all, as I said, we've just done hand, elbow, shoulder, core, legs, and then we go through to some other drills. So let's do, let's go through the other drills quickly and we'll come back to them and we'll give them 10 minutes of uh, questions. And then we'll sign off because most people on holiday, uh, a lot of people are gonna be watching this on YouTube later on. So hopefully they learn. And as I say, it's quite difficult being out here. You don't get much feedback. You don't know what people are saying and just hopefully they're learning. Okay, so that was the elbow. So hand, elbow, shoulder, shoulder. I even don't even need the paddle. The big thing about the shoulder exercise is just to be and standing up actually even works. This is how simple it is, but again, it's one of the hardest drills people find to do, is if I'm here and I just lift my arm and I just push my shoulder forward, look how much I rotate. Automatically, I don't have to think about it. And the shoulder drill, if I think about the shoulder only, and I just pull it back, look how much rotation I get. Look at that, from there and pull back. So that's how powerful the shoulder drill is. And same on the other side, so it's so simple, they're up, and I push the shoulder forward. I'm thinking shoulder. Watch, even though I'm thinking shoulder, you can get a bit of view from there. I push my shoulder forward. Look what happens here. And see, some people say, oh, they get sore backs and everything. The reason why having sore backs is this is solid, and then they're trying to move the Everything goes together. You don't have to think about it. Watch this again. From there, up, there, and you can see everything's moved. And then all I do again is pull my shoulder back. So it's very short but very powerful, that movement, and I'm gonna go forward. Okay, that's the shoulder. Not even gonna go in, into big detail there. Then the next one, also very easy to do standing up, is paddling at default, using your core. And when you've got a life jacket on, you must pull your, 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 your paddle shaft into your chest. And believe in me, if you push this, pull this into your chest, you don't need to use any arms, you can actually paddle there, don't want to break anything there. And you know what? Guess what's happening here? This shaft is 100% parallel, 100% parallel to our chest. But, but the funny thing is we, when you're doing it, we, everybody wants to do this, a little bit of pulling. Little, that's not parallel. Okay. So it's there, there, putting it in. And you can do these exercises and you can see how hard it is to do. So that's paddling on your chest. And then paddling at default, it's important to keep your elbows in. You keep your elbows in, it's not how you paddle, but it's gonna cure you, and you're gonna see how much rotation you do. And again, I, this is parallel, so I want to be there, just drop my hand in, and then feel the power of my body. Drop my hand in, feel the power. Notice, I stay parallel. But when you're doing this in the boat, you'll notice how much you'll rotate, and how much you feel the power coming through your legs and your core, doing this drill. There, drop it in, and then pull it. Okay. Oh, uh, brace drill. The best brace drills, and I, and I mentioned always in my thing, is to paddle five strokes. I got. Put your left hand on your right knee. Paddle at forty-five degrees. Turn right with your toe. Turn right. Lean right. Brace right. Okay, because you actually want to put your weight on. And as you get better, you should be able to do this. And you should be able to do this in big waves. So, so five strokes, and once I'm here, there. Right hand, left knee, 45 degrees, because if the wave hits you, it doesn't affect you. And then turn left, brace left, and lean left, so that you can really feel the pressure on the braid. And do that 
five. And as you get better, you can go five, 10, 15 times. It doesn't matter. The more you brace, the more confidence you get and the faster you'll get because you're confident and you know what you're doing. Okay, so invariably, invariably, that's a good, that happens to a lot of people. So what happens, and, and something that, uh, that, again, as you get more, more involved, is that too many people push across like this. Notice this, notice this pushing across. So when I'm pushing across, I'm doing this. What I'm trying to do, and this is something you're gonna work on, is I try and push my shoulder forward, forward, along the side of the boat, and my hand along the side of the boat, and don't do this. Because this is what causes the hands to do this, okay? So don't do this, because that's what happens. Try, and, and this is what I, I visualize. My boat's there, I visualize driving the shoulder down the shaft, and I try and dr drive my hand down the side of the boat. Hand down the side of the boat, and don't push over. And that pushing over invariably causes that problem. You're still gonna have a movement. Even me, I have movement and I just watch it and I, my hands are very loose and a wax is a very good thing, but not too much wax on a, a long paddle. And does it work with Greenland paddles? Yes, yes. I mean, every, the Greenland paddles, every paddle works, it's the same. The only difference between Greenland paddles, you should be still using your core and everything like that, you don't get the benefit of the lift of a wing paddle, but your your stroke will be very much flatter because your hands are lower, and but still using your body. Don't pull with your arm. You'll still go better using a green land paddle, using your legs and arms as opposed to using your your. Oh, no, she's in a. Um... Yeah, so I mean, at the end of the day, if you're having a problem with sliding and your arms are going all differently, just put an actual and ladies with that nail varnish. Put a few nail varnishes along the, the both sides, so you can visualize to make sure that you're in the right place. Because as you lengthen and shorten your paddle so will your your grips your your grip position it'll always stay the same always 90 degrees but it'll change the difference in the shaft so putting putting some sort of markings on there that you can you can visualize that should stop the problem with your hands moving in and out as well okay so the, the last the last body exercise before we go into other exercises and as i said it's, it's holiday you don't want to get bored down is leg drive leg drive is the hardest thing to get right but it's the most satisfying when you get it right because it gives you the most power so the whole thing about and and and, and this is always an argument and Ivan and i and lots of other people say oh and we have to have this hot this hard uh, foot strap must be really hard so that you can rotate more and you can pull back believe me it's science any movement pulling back is going to pull your boat back because what we're trying to do and if you start concentrating on leg drive alone what we're actually trying to do is put this paddle in so i've rotated then all i want to do is drive my leg forward remember drive my leg forward into the footrest and not push my bum backwards so to give you a good example is that what i'm trying to do is pull my bum this is the back of the seat this is my bum. I'm trying to pull my bum off the seat. Now, if I pull my bum off the seat, my bum is connected to both feet, both feet. So if I'm pulling my bum off the seat, no matter if it's five millimeters or 10 millimeters, how much I rotate, both feet are going to be pushing forward or should be pushing forward. Remember, the only difference is one is going to be pushing harder than the other. So that's the difference. But they're both trying to do is push our boat forward so we end up doing this and we're pushing the footrest forward pulling our bum off the seat and and, and that's where we get the rotation so 
both feet should always be pushing forward on every stroke one pushing harder than the other because of the rotation so again when you're doing the the the, the leg drive drill you're just thinking of leg drive you're just thinking of driving your foot into that into the into the footrest and trying to pull yourself past the paddle so if i'm pulling myself past the paddle i'm pushing the boat forward Do the same stroke between that stroke. Absolutely. I mean, I was just coaching in Dubai with Paddle Hub there in, in Dubai at, at dusk. And he said, at the end of the day, Jean and Riley Fitzgerald got a gold medal at the, at the Olympics and they're both surf ski paddles. It's the same technique. Yes, there's some variance. With the younger you are, yes, you can keep your arms up and you can do, get to have operations when you're 21. The bottom line is, we all try and do the same, driving with our legs, using our core, keeping the boat st uh, straight without bouncing up and down and making sure we take the paddle out early. It's all the same. But leading me, I was just looking, watching Jean van der and paddling with, was paddling with Riley to the, today. And they're all starting to come right. They're all starting to drop their elbows down. Everything's happening, which I sort of worked out 25 years ago when I was getting old already then is to make sure you try and detune and try and get the strongest possible position and the strongest possible position is trying to get your core and your legs involved in your experience making the grip of the paddle concave or thickness or a small nut put in hand is so yeah see that's a problem because I always change my paddle length. I, I never keep the same paddle length at all. So putting lumps and things like that, you don't. Know. As you get better, you should, this wing paddle does its own thing. Or, and I only hold it, and if you can look there, I only hold it very lightly and let the wing paddle do its job. And let the paddle do its job. So don't hold tight. I never hold tight at all. That's why I've got no blisters. And I make sure that uh, I'm not... Uh, gripping this paddle too hard and I don't give gripping in the same place all the time because I, I make the length difference all the time. Okay, we said we're going to do one hour, 45 minutes and we right there and I really appreciate all those people that listened. I hope you learned and we'll keep on carrying on with this. Remember, just go to coach chulipski.com and and to sign up for my online courses whatever you want and and remember that i'm always there for all my oscars club uh, members you ask questions you get replies fairly fast within 24 hours unless i'm sick and maimed and disabled otherwise i'm always there for you to help you paddle faster with less effort less injury and having fun remember i'm about gone past the Olympic stage, I'm there to make people paddle faster with less effort and more fun. And that's, that's what I, I try and do. And I know I can do it because at my age at 58 and in March in two months time, I'll be 59, sure, getting back, to, getting to 60. And I feel that I'm still going as fast as when I was young. Thank you very much. Is there one last one? One last question. Which can affect my leg drive. What do you recommend for seat pad? Yeah, so yeah, so the, the most important thing you can put seat pads. Uh, obviously, it, it does make your stability go a little bit less. You get less stable. But the most important, with any pad that you put on, make sure that you get a very slippery surface on top. So that you can still rotate properly so all you do if you've got a normal uh, butt pad which is made out of foam all you do is put a, a, a plastic uh, covering on it i've used many times i've just used a, a shopping bag put it on there and it just makes my, my butt slip a lot so that's why i never put wax on my on, on my seats i make sure my seats are very slippery and I don't mind them if they're wide, it doesn't worry me because I'm in the bottom of the seat and I really, really rotate hard. And if, if I get a sore butt, that means I'm very thin, then I'll put a butt pad. And if I put a butt pad, I'll make sure that it's very slippery. Okay. 
hope you all have a fantastic, prosperous 2022. And I look forward to coaching you. And I look forward to uh, speaking to a lot of you people while I'm in the Caribbean. I'll be doing a lot of videos teaching in the warm waters there and, and hopefully teach you more things. And remember, I'm not only there for uh, your paddling. I can help in most positive things in life. Thank you very much and have a good 2022.